One of the most important things when you're making music is speed, is velocity, is how fast you can get your idea out of your head before you forget it. And programming drums can be a very intricate process and usually we wanna find ways to speed up this process. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to find the perfect drum sounds fast for your production that you're working on today. Are you ready? Let's go. What's going on ladies and gentlemen, this is your boy Five Piece producer and engineer extraordinaire. Thank you for checking out today's video and if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe and the bell button below so you can stay tuned for more helpful videos, I'm talking about all kinds of stuff on my channel, usually talking about how to sound better and how to make more money with your music. If you want to do those two things, definitely subscribe so I can help you with that. But in today's video, we're looking to speed up our workflow and find better ways or faster ways to pick the most perfect drum sound. I'm gonna jump onto my computer and I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that with one key strategy, so let's go. Making a favorite drums folder is very easy. You just gotta spend a little bit of time doing it, but the time you put in up front will ultimately save you hours in the long run because what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with a folder of sounds that you've already auditioned, you've already listened to, you already know that they work, and you could just go to them and pick from them before you go anywhere else. You could still go into your other samples that you have if you really need to, but ever since I started doing this, I find that I don't look anywhere else. I go right to my folder and I'm able to just pick something there and it usually works 99% of the time with very little effort required from me. Now, let's talk about how you can create a folder just like I have. The first step is you're gonna to wanna to navigate to where you store your drums and you're gonna to wanna to create a brand new folder and you're probably gonna to wanna to title that either favorites or your producer name or producer name kit. So for me, it's a five piece kit and that's my drum folder, my favorites folder that I have on my computer here. And whether you're on Mac or PC, it doesn't matter. I'm on a Mac, but you can do this in a PC equally as well. And what we're gonna do is the second step after you've created your kit is you're gonna create a bunch of subfolders that basically takes every single sound that's a part of a drum kit and gives it its own folder. So for example, I have kicks, I have snares, I have closed hi-hats, I have open hi-hats, I have loops, I have claps, I have breaks, I have a whole bunch of different subcategories you can see here. And at the beginning, they're gonna be empty, but what you're gonna do is your goal is gonna to be to fill these up with your favorite sounds that apply to what the label is. So, you know, in the kicks folder, it's gonna be a bunch of kicks. In the open hi-hats folder, it's gonna be a bunch of open hi-hats. I'm not gonna put claps in either of those. I'm gonna make sure that it's sounds that actually represent what the label is. Now, after I've created these subfolders and each of them represents a type of drum sound, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start this process by deciding what we wanna focus on first. Like I said, this is gonna take some time to set up up front, and you're probably gonna to wanna to do this over a bit of a period of time. So maybe you just spend 20 minutes every couple of days cycling through sounds and copying the best ones and putting them into this folder. In this case, let's pretend that we wanted to just focus on kicks. What I'm gonna then do is I'm gonna open up an enclosing folder, so another finder window in my case, and I'm gonna to navigate to the same folder where all my drum samples are, and I'm gonna go through each of the packs that I have one by one, and I'm gonna focus once again on kicks because that's what I've decided to focus on. So let's say I was focusing on that. I might go into any of these packs. I'll go to the kicks, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna audition each of these samples. I'm gonna to listen to them in real time, and I'm gonna decide right then and there when I hear it, whether or not I like it, whether or not it hits, whether or not it ticks some of the boxes that I look for when I'm making beats. A lot of us do this based on feel and that's totally okay. If you feel like a sound is good, it's good and it's probably worth copying, but just pay attention and see what actually tickles your inspiration bone. That's how I like to think about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just play right now and show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna audition it. I like this one, this one sounds good. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna copy it. So I'm not gonna just drag and move it all together. I wanna still preserve where it came from because maybe one day I need to know where it came from when sourcing things, clearing samples, etc. So I wanna still leave it where it is. But what I wanna do is I wanna copy it and I'm gonna paste it into this folder. I just did that. Hopefully you heard that sound, but it pasted it into my kicks folder. And I'm gonna just keep moving. I'll go to the next sample. 
and I'm going to do the same thing. You can also hold Option and drag, and it'll also drag it over. I actually have the sample in my pack, so I'm not going to bother br uh, bringing it in there, but you kind of get the idea. You see how easy this is, and all you're going to do is you're going to kind of do this and try to focus on a different type of sound every time you do this. Don't just focus on kicks every single time. You know, spend one moment on kicks, then go and do snares, and then do percussion, and try to work through as much as you can, and definitely try to work through every single kit that you can. And once you've copied everything over and you've built up your favorites kit, you're gonna be in a great position to start using this kit in your own productions. You're obviously still using other people's samples, but at least you have this favorite kit that'll save you time up front and lead to better results later. So there you have it, a real simple and effective strategy to speed up your workflow by simply doing a little bit more work up front by assembling your own drum kit. If you got value out of this video, apply the knowledge right away. That's the first thing. But if you really got value out of this video, share it with somebody you know and love, somebody you know it's gonna help. And I'm looking forward to helping you guys again soon. Don't forget to smash that like button and I'll see you later. Five.